Hey, Philip, here's your news. In News Maine. A new short documentary is out about one of Maine's iconic industries, not as well known as the lobster industry, not as well known as the potato industry in Aroostook, but still part of the fabric of Maine. Let's take a look at one clip from the film. To me, these wild blueberry lands are to Maine as the rainforest is to the world. And that's really true. They need to care about these wild blueberry lands. They need to preserve them and save them. This biodiversity is extremely important. With us now to talk about Growing Wild, which is the name of the film, the director, Jameson Smith, and Ashley Field from Fields Fields in Dresden. Fabulous name, an organic <laughs> blueberry farm. Thanks both of you for coming in. Good to have you here. Good Let job. me start with you. What was the basic story that you wanted to tell here? Well, we, I wanted to tell the story of the Maine Wild Blueberry. And uh, when the project started, it really became a challenge of figuring out what is our way in there. And I thought of no better way into that story than the people like Ashley who bring that crop to life for us and bring it around the world for people to enjoy. So we really wanted to focus on character stories. It's a hard life. I love it, but it's a hard life. It's a lot of work, not much thanks. <laughs> and uh, you get more of it as, as an enjoyment than you do monetary profit out of it. When the filmmakers came to you, what was the story that you wanted to tell about your and your family's experiences as organic blueberry farmers? I think there's just a lot of pride in being a Mainer and being part of something that's so unique and special is, you know, it fills me with a lot of gratitude. So just telling our story as being a part of the larger story was really important for us. Wild blueberries are, they're a wild food. So we're not cultivating, we're not planting, we're not prepping the fields, we're not manipulating in any way. We're just coexisting. I didn't know how many varieties there are of wild blueberries. Yeah, I mean, just in one small blueberry field, say one acre, there can be up to a thousand varieties. And that's what makes wild blueberries so unique. It's not just one variety, one taste, one color. It's all mixed together. I think a wild food in and of itself is a perfect food. It's not manipulated by humans or any sort of lab or seed. What's given to you is the product of that past year and then in the blueberries case, 10,000 years. How did you choose the farmers and the farms that you wanted to focus on? Yeah, so I mean, it really, we cast it a wide net to start, you know, and that's really the best way to do it, to see who might be interested. It's a big ask to say, you know, we want to tell your story and we want to invade your life with cameras for a while, for a whole season and a harvest, which they're working incredibly hard. So it really came down to the responses we got and, and we started building relationships with Ashley's family and the folks, other farms that responded and really whittled it down to four that we felt like captured the bigger picture of the story while staying focused on on something that we can we can be drawn to and, and, and build a compelling story around. Maine wild blueberry farmers are a unique breed, as I'm sure every farmer will tell you. But what I think is particularly important to know is that there are very, very few full-time Maine wild blueberry farmers. Uh, a lot of those farmers have side jobs or other agricultural products that they produce. It's a labor of love for many people. Uh, I really was drawn to this energy that I felt at every single farm, which was non-competitive, it was supportive, it was really, you know, it felt less like farming and more like stewardship. And that was an idea that we really wanted to capture in the film. Every farmer in the film clearly wants the traditions to continue, to, and in many cases be passed on to the kids and the grandkids. Long term, what is the outlook for the wild blueberry industry in Maine? I think it's really positive. Um, there's a great push right now to get information out into the public and for um, consumers to feel connected to wild blueberries and for them to learn about the uniqueness of the fruit. And so I, it, for me, it just looks really upward. For people who want to see growing wild, how can they do it? Well, we're submitting to film festivals all over the country and the world internationally as well. You know, those deadlines are spread out across the year, and when we hear back about whether we're selected or not, that's sort of spread out across the year. So we've created a website for the film, growingwildfilm.com. We're going to be updating that regularly as soon as uh, we hear back from these festivals, and we can offer screening times and ways to see it. Of course, after the festival run, we will release the film publicly for, for people to enjoy. James and Ashley, thank you both for coming in. Again, the name of the film, Growing Wild. If you want to find out more about it, just head to the 207 section of our New Center Main website or app.
If slow, unreliable internet is affecting your business, you're going to love Fidium at Work from Fidium Fiber Internet. With Fidium at Work, you get the service you pay for because it's 100% fiber internet over a dedicated connection to your business. That includes the same upload and download speeds. Plus, you get the latest Wi-Fi 6 technology to enable consistently faster Wi-Fi speeds and wider coverage. That's sure to keep everyone happy, connected, and productive. Find out more at FidiumFiber.com slash small business. If you like listening to music, podcasts, or audio books on your Amazon Echo device, you can take your listening to the next level with multi-room audio. Just place Echo devices in multiple rooms of your home and have Alexa play music everywhere for a multi-room listening experience. Shop now for the Echo Show 8 on Amazon. The deadline to enter the big moose permit lottery is just a few days away. You have until just before midnight on Monday, but you can apply online. There is a fee that's involved to be eligible. You must have or be able to get a main big game hunting license. And if you have won recently in the lottery, you have to wait three years to try again. You can find more information, including links to apply on our new center main website and app. Other news out of Portland, the interim city manager, Danielle West, is expected to become the permanent choice for the job. The city council is expected to vote on her getting a position on Monday. She has been the interim city manager since late 2021. She's now expected to stay in the role for three more years. Here in Maine, the Mills administration is keeping an eye on the immigration situation. A representative says the governor's office is working with individual communities to prepare for how the policies end might affect Maine. But the governor says overall, immigration is a national problem. She is calling on Congress to improve the system. The city of Portland also gave us a statement about the end of Title 42. A representative says the program's expiration date shouldn't have much of an effect on the city. And that's because Portland's shelters are at capacity, so anyone who might arrive would simply get resources on how to look for housing on their own. City officials in Portland are moving forward with plans to clear out a homeless encampment near the Bayside Trail. They say they're doing it because of safety concerns for the people who stay there. At this point, there are nearly 90 tents. Officials say it could take days to get the area cleaned out. Both city employees and other organizations say while the cleanup goes on, there isn't enough money, resources, or shelter for everyone. One man we spoke with says he has stayed at the encampment for the last three months. He says forcing it to break up won't solve anything and will drive people to regroup somewhere else. It's like trying to sweep.